Hi everyone, today I'll tell you everything you need to know about skin tags. What are skin tags? Why do they occur? What does it signify? How to treat? We'll cover everything in detail. So let's get started. It is estimated that at least 50 to 60% people develop one of these skin tags in their lifetime and this usually occurs at about 30 years of age. Why does it occur? It mostly occurs due to friction. When two surfaces rub against each other, that is when you get skin tags. That is why these are visible mainly in the skin folds. But it also occurs in condition of insulin resistance like acanthosis nigricans, wherein there is increased insulin in the body that can lead to rise of these skin tags. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a detailed video on acanthosis nigricans. So how do they look like? They are skin colored, they are very soft to touch and they usually occur on body folds. So do not confuse them with warts. Warts are also similar growth that is seen mainly on the face and neck but warts have a warty surface that means the surface is irregular while the skin tag has a very smooth surface. So that is how you can differentiate between a wart and a skin tag. If there is any confusion between the two, you must consult a dermatologist because skin tags can grow very slowly. So, you know, even if you ignore it for a few years, it's fine as long as it doesn't bother you. But if it's a what, it has to be treated immediately. What is a viral infection, it spreads easily and especially if you have kids in the house, you don't want to keep the what on your skin for too long. So if you're confused between a what and a skin tag, then consult your dermatologist immediately. Another way to differentiate is the color. Warts are usually darker or lighter in color than the skin, while skin tags are the same color as the skin. Also, skin tags grow very slowly. They might be on your skin for a long time, but warts tend to grow very rapidly. They increase in size rapidly, and also they can spread over the area, especially in the beard. If you are shaving, then it can lead to inoculation of warts in the other areas that can lead to multiple warts in the beard area. So if you have that, please seek help. What does a skin tag indicate? So if it is harmless, why should we even bother? So one skin tag here and there is okay, not a problem, but if you have multiple skin tags and this is accompanied with thickening of the skin in the neck, in the armpits, groin, under the breast, then this can signify insulin resistance. It has been shown that skin tags are more common in people who suffer from obesity, metabolic syndrome or from diabetes. And skin tags are more commonly seen in people who have insulin resistance or diabetes in their family. So basically it indicates that you can have a higher chance of developing diabetes in the future. If you have multiple skin tags on the face or in the neck area, then that is an indication that you have to change your lifestyle and make certain changes in order to reduce the chances of getting diabetes because there is a positive correlation between developing diabetes and having these multiple skin tags. Chances of developing diabetes are higher if along with skin tags there is also thickening of skin in the body folds. So please watch out for it and make the required changes in order to reduce the chances of developing diabetes in future. So what lifestyle changes should you make if you have skin tags? So this is the most important part of the video. If you are here, this is what I want you to understand. So there are certain lifestyle changes that you can make in order to reduce the recurrence of skin tags, especially if you have multiple and especially if it's associated with thickening of the skin. First is regular exercise. You have to exercise for at least 45 minutes in a day. It can be even brisk walking, you can do a little bit of cardio, whatever it is that you like, you have to exercise for at least 45 minutes every day. Then second is cutting down on sugar. Okay, sugar intake in the form of multiple cups of coffee or tea can actually build up and make you more prone to develop diabetes. So that is something you want to avoid. Also reduce the amount of carbohydrate intake. Our diet, especially Indian diet, is quite heavy on carbohydrates and we love our potatoes. So you want to reduce the sources of high carbohydrate and focus more on taking protein. So I'm not saying that you should cut down uh, carbohydrates completely. No, that is not healthy. You have to reduce it so that it consists of only 20% of your meal and you increase the amount of protein that you're taking. Try to increase the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables, colorful vegetables, green leafy vegetables are high in antioxidants and they are very good for the body. So make sure that you take a lot of that. 
Also, cutting down on alcohol is important. Alcohol per se does not carry too many calories, but it's the unhealthy snacking and eating and the lack of inhibition that you have, which makes you indulge in the sugary food and high carbohydrate food after drinking alcohol that has a negative impact on your body. So if you are somebody who's struggling to lose weight, then please look into your alcohol consumption as that could be one of the reasons. So all these changes will actually have a positive impact on your body. So if you reg exercise regularly, eat a healthy diet, a balanced meal, high in protein, this can really help in improving your overall skin health and will also help in reducing weight and then improve your insulin resistance. So how do we treat skin tags? This depends upon the size of skin tags. If you have very tiny skin tags which do not have a neck, they are lying flat on the skin, then if they are very tiny and small, then you can just leave it as is and as you lose weight, they tend to improve and disappear. But if you have sessile skin tags, that means there is a neck to the skin tag, then they will have to be removed because even after losing weight, they are not going to go away. So if they are very tiny ones, you can leave it as is, but if there are multiple ones or they are pedunculated and have a neck, then they have to be removed. The removal takes about five minutes. It's a very quick procedure at a dermatologist clinic. We ablate the base using either radiofrequency ablation or CO2 laser. So with that, we burn the base and then the skin heals normally without any scar. Will any cream work for skin tags? So, well, this is tricky. Usually, creams do not help in improving skin tags that much, but if they are very, very tiny and flat, then using tretinoin cream can sometimes help in reducing. But this only helps if they are very tiny and flat, okay? Mostly, uh, people who come to us have skin tags with neck which are pedunculated, which have a stem. So, in that case, then creams do not work. It's better to get them removed at a clinic. What are the home remedies that can work? So few commonly practiced home remedies are tying a thread or burning it with an agarbatti. Absolutely not recommended to do any of this. Tying thread may get rid of it, but sometimes can cause strangulation, redness, and actually increase the size of the tag and come sometimes cause necrosis of the skin, which is something that we don't want. So no, avoid any home remedy when it comes to skin tags. Even burning it with either chuna or agarbatti can actually lead to damage to the surrounding skin and can cause more harm than good. So it's better to just visit a dermat and just get it removed in a very easy, effective and a safe way rather than opting for any of these home remedies. So will they recur? So yes, if you don't follow the lifestyle changes, then skin tags can recur. But if you lose weight and if you make those changes that I mentioned before, then the chances of recurrence do go down. I hope you found this video useful. If you like the skin and hair related content, you can follow me on my Instagram handle, Dr. Anchil MD, where I post skin and hair related content daily. Thank you for watching.